So I don't want you to look at this example yet. This example, let's come back to it. But in this case over here, we have an, an observed location i. And at that location, we have a yi up here. Now, the total variance, the component of the total sum of squares that this observation is going to add is going to be equal to the squared difference between yi and y bar. So it's the squared, it's the square of this quantity over here. Now that quantity over there can be decomposed into two parts. So the total variance part can be decomposed based on where the regression line crosses the line. And the part below this line, between the mean and the regression line, that's going to be the component, that's y hat minus y bar. This is the reg SS component. So this is the amount of the total variation that's explained by the regression model. And the residual component is this up here, the difference between yi and y hat. So this component over there is the residual sum of square. So let's imagine that this regression line passed very, very close to our observed point. Or let's find an example over here where that happens. So it, the regression line comes very close to passing through. I don't know why that happened. So the regression line comes very close to passing by this point over here. In which case, when we look at these quantities, the total sum of squares, the regression sum of squares, and the residual sum of squares, we see that the residual sum of squares is a very small fraction of the total sum of squares. Or here, even, the residual is a pretty small fraction of the total. Or the ratio of the residual to the regression sum of squares is going to be very small. So when our model is really well fitting, our residual sum of squares is going to be small in comparison to the regression sum of squares. Here's just another neater, I think, example of showing the relationship or showing the quantities of the different deviations that add up to the sums of squares. So first, we see that the total sum of squares is the difference between yi and y hat. It's this quantity here. And we see that that quantity equals the sum of the regression sum of squares, so it's this component, plus the residual sum of squares, this component. And if the residual sum of squares is small in comparison to the regression sum of squares, that's going to imply that our regression line passes very close to, obs to our observed y values. If, on the other hand, our residual sum of squares is very big in comparison to the regression sum of squares, that's going to imply that our regression line actually is not very close to the individual data points on our plot. It's actually going to imply that our regression line is more or less flat. It's close to our mean. So in that case, we don't have a very good approximation of yi using our regression line. In fact, if the residual sum of squares are very big in the extreme case, then the mean is just as good as, as an approximation of the, of the value of y as is the regression line.